Over the past several months, you have heard a number of complaints brought against me. I called for an independent review, and I said at the beginning I would let the process unfold. I didn't want anyone to say that I interfered. I said I would hold my tongue, and I have, making only limited comments. It has been a hard and a painful period for me and my family, especially as others feed ugly stories to the press. But I cooperated with the review, and I can now finally share the truth. Now, I have to go back to work on my State of the Union speech, and I worked on it till pretty late last night. But I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work for the American people. Thank you. My attorney, who is a non-political former federal prosecutor, has done a response to each allegation, and the facts are much different than what has been portrayed. That document is available on my website. If you are interested, please take the time to read the facts and decide for yourself. First, I want you to know directly from me that I never touched anyone inappropriately or made inappropriate sexual advances. The news of this day is that Kenneth Starr, the independent counsel, is investigating allegations that you suborn perjury by encouraging a 24-year-old woman, former White House intern, to lie under oath in a civil deposition about her having had an affair with you. Mr. President, is that true? That is not true. That is not true. I did not ask anyone to tell anything other than the truth. There is no improper relationship, and I intend to cooperate with this inquiry. Uh, but that is not true. The New York Times published a front-page picture of me touching a woman's face at a wedding and then kissing her on the cheek. That is not front page news. I've been making the same gesture in public all my life. I actually learned it from my mother and from my father. It is meant to convey warmth, nothing more. Indeed, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of photos of me using the exact same gesture. I do it with everyone, black and white, young and old, straight and LGBTQ, powerful people, friends, strangers, people who I meet on the street. No improper relationship. Define what you mean by that. Well, I think you know what it means. It means that, uh, that there is not a, uh, a sexual relationship, an improper sexual relationship, or any other uh, kind of improper relationship. You had no sexual relationship with this young woman. Th there is not a sexual relationship. That is accurate. The, we are doing our best to cooperate here, but mm -hmm. we don't know much yet. Uh, and uh, that's all I can say now. What I'm trying to do, is to uh, contain my <coughs> natural impulses and get back to work. I think it's important that we cooperate. I will cooperate, but I want to focus on the work at hand. After the event, the woman told the press that she took offense at the gesture. And for that, I apologize. Another woman stated that I kissed her on the forehead at our Christmas party and that I said, ciao, Bella. Now, I don't remember doing it, but I'm sure that I did. I do kiss people on the forehead. I do kiss people on the cheek. I do kiss people on the hand. I do embrace people. I do hug people, men and women. I do on occasion say, ciao, Bella. On occasion, I do slip and say sweetheart 
or darling or honey. I do banter with people. I do tell jokes, some better than others. I am the same person in public as I am in private. You have seen me do it on TV through all my briefings and for 40 years before that. I try to put people at ease. I try to make them smile. I try to connect with them. And I try to show my appreciation and my friendship. I now understand that there are generational or cultural perspectives that frankly I hadn't fully appreciated. And I have learned from this. Just for the record, to make sure I understand what your answer means, so there's no ambiguity about it. There is no. Did, all right. You had no conversations with this young woman, Monica Lewinsky, about her testimony, or possible testimony, before uh, in giving uh, a, I did a not deposition. Urge, I did not urge anyone to say anything that was untrue. Mm -hmm. I did not urge anyone to say anything that was untrue. That's my statement to you. Did you talk uh, to and her on, on, oh, Beyond me, that, I think it's very important that we let the investigation take its course. Uh, the, the, but I want you to know that that is my clear position. I didn't ask anyone to go in there and say something that's not true. Also, remember where we are. Today, we are living in a superheated, if not toxic, political environment. That shouldn't be lost on anyone. Politics and bias are interwoven throughout every aspect of this situation. One would be naive to think otherwise. And New Yorkers are not naive. Another one of the allegations is that, uh, that you may have asked, or the allegation that's been investigated is that you asked your friend Vernon Jordan to do, that. to do that. I absolutely did not that, do that. I can tell you, I did not do that. I, was, I did not do that. He is in no, in no ways involved in trying to get anybody to say anything that's not true at my request. I didn't do that. Now, I don't know what else to tell you. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I don't even know. All I know is what I have read here. Uh, but. I'm going to cooperate. I didn't ask anybody not to tell the truth. There is no improper relationship. The allegations I have read are not true. I do not know what the basis of them is other than just what you know. We'll just have to wait and see. And I will be vigorous about it. But I have got to get back to the work of the country. I was up past midnight with Prime Minister Netanyahu last night. I've got Mr. Arafat coming in. We've got action all over the world in the State of the Union to do. I'll do my best to cooperate with this just as I have through every other issue that's come up over the last several years, but I have got to get back to work. Would you acknowledge, though, Mr. President, this is very serious business, uh, this charge against you that's been made? And I will cooperate in the inquiry of it. Mm -hmm. What's going on? What, 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 uh, if it's not tr true, that means well, somebody you, made this up. Is that, is that, is that? I, look, you know as much about this as I do right now. We'll just have to look into it and cooperate, and uh, we'll see. But meanwhile, I've got to go on with the work of the country. I got hired to help the rest of the American people. I understand these dynamics. My father used to say, God rest his soul, that politics is an ugly business. As usual, he was right. But for my father and for me, it's worth it. Because despite it all, at the end of the day, we get good things done for people. And that is what really matters. And for those who are using this moment to score political points or seek publicity or personal gain, I say they actually discredit the legitimate sexual harassment victims that the law was designed to protect. Good evening. This afternoon in this room, from this chair, I testified before the Office of Independent Counsel and the Grand Jury. I answered their questions truthfully, including questions about my private life, questions no American citizen would ever want to answer. Still, I must take complete responsibility for all my actions, both public and private. And that is why I am speaking to you tonight, 
as you know, in a deposition in January, I was asked questions about my relationship with Monica Lewinsky. While my answers were legally accurate, I did not volunteer information. Indeed, I did have a relationship with Ms. Lewinsky that was not appropriate. In fact, it was wrong. It constituted a critical lapse in judgment and a personal failure on my part for which I am solely and completely responsible. 